Hello, everyone. Very excited to be here with you all today and talk about linked list. Um, the agenda we have uh, for today is to just go over uh, linked list. What are linked list? Um, what is a linked list? And uh, why should we use a linked list? What are the real world scenarios where linked lists are used? And then uh, discuss some types of linked lists that are commonly used and then um, go over uh, some syntax of linked list and discuss the uh, time and space complexity. And then finally, uh, we'll go over some techniques and tips that would be useful for the interview preparation. Um, I would say this, um, this uh, presentation is mostly focused for uh, beginners, but if you are an advanced or intermediate um, person on linked list, then I think the te uh, techniques and tips uh, part of the presentation uh, will be helpful. Uh, with that said, uh, let's get started. So what are linked list? Um, linked list is a data structure that is used to store a data in computer's memory. Uh, think of that like a box in computer memory and that and each box holds a value. And um, each um, like linked list are composed of nodes. So a linked list is made up of nodes um, and all these nodes are linked to each other. Let's get to, um, into detail of what node is and what it is composed of. So a node, it has a value and a, um, and a reference. So the reference is usually, um, it refers to the next node in the linked list. Uh, so why does it have a node and a value? Um, what is so special about linked list? Uh, why, um, why does it have like a node and a value like a versus an array that has just an uh, just a value. Uh, to give a um, quick overview about that, uh, let's imagine. Just a second. Trying to see if I can use a pointer here. Okay. Um. So uh, let's imagine a computer, uh, like let's uh, imagine a computer memory, um, trying to draw that over here. I'll just uh, use the Google drawings for that. Okay. Can everyone see my screen, um, the, the Google Drive? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's um, imagine like this is the computer memory and it has uh, different locations and okay so in um in a linked list you have a uh, you have a node here and the next node could be anywhere in the computer memory it could be located here or it could be located here so um and how do I know where the next node sits? That's why uh, there is a reference to the next node. So let's call this node A and um, call this node B. So um, A will also carry a reference to the next node. Uh, it will um, it will point to the memory location of, of its next node. So A will have a value. Um, it could be like, um, yeah, uh, A, A can have a value like, uh, five or six, whatever. It could be of any uh, data type. It could be an integer, it could be a character or a string. Um, and it also has a um, address to the next node in the linked list. So um, if you go here, um, this is node one, and there are three nodes here, node one, node two, node three, and each node are connected to each other. Um, node A, has a reference to the next node, which is node B, and node B has a reference to the next node, which is node C. So this is the basic structure of linked list. Um, and 
the first node here um, is usually called the head node and the last node is uh, called the tail node. And the other thing to note here is um, the last node in the linked list, it doesn't have any reference. It no longer points to any node. And that's why here it, it, it points to null value or a none uh, because it's the last node and it doesn't have any node to point to. Um, Usually in, pro, uh, in programs, we will be given access to the first node, that is the head node, and the other nodes we reach it uh, through traversal. Um, so what is traversal? And let's look at uh, some common terminologies that are used in linked list. So um, the node, it is the basic unit of a linked list. A linked list is made up of nodes and all nodes are linked to each other. And the data field um, is actually, um, an object that holds the value. Um, as I said earlier, it could be um, a string, it could be an integer or um, a character. And next, the reference, it, it holds the reference to the next uh, node or um, it's a pointer to the next node in the linked list. Um, we, could, uh, we could say that it stores the memory location of the next node or the address of the next node. So this reference will hold the address of the second node uh, B. Um, and what is traversing? Traversing is moving from one node to other node. Uh, let's say we are at the head node um, and then from head node moving to the next node and then moving to the next node. So it's just uh, passing over through nodes. Um, head node, it's the first uh, node in the linked list. It's, the, it's usually called the entry point. Um, you reach the other nodes through the head node and um, the tail node, uh, it is the last node in the linked list. And there are special kind of nodes which are uh, called sentinel nodes. Uh, these, these type of nodes are um, otherwise called as dummy nodes. Uh, they don't have any value and they point uh, to the head node. So like, let's assume there's a dummy node here and that will not have any value. And it usually points to the head node. Um, these are, um, created for some to handle some special situations in the code and we'll go over them um, in, in the future slides. So, and now, um, now that we understand what are the basic terminologies of the linked list, let's see what are the types of linked lists that are commonly used. So there are four types of uh, linked lists that are commonly used. Um, the singly linked list, uh, doubly linked list, circular linked list, and doubly circular linked list. Uh, singly linked list, that's the most commonly used linked list. Um, it has a data and it also has a, a reference to the next node. And in singly linked list, we can reach the uh, next node through traversal and the traversal happens only in one direction. So from the head node, I move to the next node. And from there, I move to the uh, you know, um, next node. So um, the traversal just happens in one direction. Doubly linked list um, is slightly different than singly linked list because it um, it can be traversed in both directions. Uh, so from, from this uh, node, I can reach to the next node and I can reach the previous node as well. So um, doubly linked list, they usually have um, two pointers, like one that points to the next node of the linked list and uh, the other one that points to the previous node of the linked list. So um, with, with that, uh, it could be traversed in both directions. And the next type of linked list is circular linked list. Circular linked list are a variant of singly linked list. The only difference is um, if you see in the singly linked list, the last node, it points to a null value. Whereas in circular uh, linked list, it doesn't have a last node. The, um, if you see here, the last node, it points again to the head node. It refers to the head node. So there is no end, it forms a loop. Um, that's the only difference between the sing uh, singly linked list and circular linked list. And the last type of uh, li uh, linked list is uh, called the doubly, link doubly circular linked list. These are um, variation of uh, the doubly linked list. So um, in the doubly circular linked list, the doubly circular linked list also have two pointers, the previous and the next. Um, the only difference is the next value um, in the doubly linked list of the last node points to the first node. So if you see here, there's a loop here. The last um, 
no, the next variable of the last node points to the um, head, head node of the linked list. And the, the previous pointer of the head node, it points to the last node of the linked list. So if you see, uh, there is a loop here, there's a cycle here. It's just similar to the double linked list with that uh, single change of uh, the last node pointing again to the first node. And there is no, no there is no end. Um, there's no node that is pointing to a null value. So uh, these are the um, commonly used type of linked list. And now let's um, go ahead and see like in real world, how linked lists are uh, being used. So if you, um, Okay, before that, um, we'll just discuss about the strength and weaknesses of linked list uh, compared with arrays. So um, as I said earlier, um, in arrays, the elements are stored next to each other. This is, a, this is not a so good, neatly drawn, uh, forgive me for that. But, but yeah, in arrays, um, the values are stored next to each other. So, um, so if you want to define an array, you would have seen like um, int and usually the size of the array is uh, initialized at the at the beginning so if you have um, if you have an array uh, you would most probably uh, you know specify the list uh, the length of the the size of the uh, array uh, in in many of the programming languages um, like java so um, with that said um, in case you wanted to increase the size of the um, array, it is not possible. So the memory manager would would actually um, have to create another um, another location, like another space in the array. With with suppose you wanted to increase the um, value to six instead of five, so it cannot add a six here. Like it has to create a new um, no new space for the, it, it has to allocate space for the new uh, value that is six. And that's the disadvantage of um, uh, array, but we can overcome that with a linked list. We can we can just add um, any, um, any number of nodes uh, at the runtime. You don't have to specify the, the size of the linked list when you're, while initializing it. So um, here is a linked list and um, you can just keep on adding nodes and you don't have to specify the, um, specify the length like uh, like arrays. So that is the uh, most uh, commonly seen advantage of linked list over arrays. It is resizable at runtime. And um, other other uh, advantages, insertion and deletion um, are are easily and um, you know it's easily implemented. It's uh, it, it's implemented with just over one runtime. Um, whereas in arrays, um, it is not so easy. You have to scoop over the elements. Like if you have to do delete a uh, four, you have to scoop over every single element to delete four, or after you delete four. So that is um, that's a slightly uh, complicated in arrays. Where, whereas in linked list, that's easy. That's why insertion and dele uh, deletion operations are with O of one runtime. And some of the um, uh, weakness, or I would say more of shortcomings of uh, linked list is uh, it uses some more storage because uh, it, it usually carries a reference of the next node. So, um, so it, it uses a slightly uh, more storage compared to the arrays. And lookup uh, are that aren't that easy like arrays. In array, you have like five, if you, you specify the size of the element, and if you want to access the fourth element, you just specify like um, um, you know array of of i. That will give you the like array of four will give you the fourth uh, you know the third element. Sorry, uh, it starts at index zero. So if you specify uh, four, it will give you the third element. Um, so that that are that is a disadvantage of um, linked list. Uh, Maha, hi, uh, sorry to interrupt you. This is Shreya. So I have a question. Uh, if you don't mind, can go to the previous slide. Could you please yes. please go to uh, double linked list again? Uh, uh, you the doubly linked list? No, uh, doubly circular linked list. Doubly circular linked list. Okay, sure. So in the doubly circular linked list, it is just a variant of doubly linked list. Um, the only difference is um, then 
the next pointer of the last node, right? There is no end um, in the doubly circular linked list. The next node points to the first node of the, like the head node of the uh, linked list. And the uh, previous pointer of the head node, like this diagram isn't fully visible. So let's, let's um, look at this one. So the difference is the next pointer would actually point, uh, let me see if I can draw. Um, I'm not able to get to the pen. Anyways, so um, the next pointer of um, if the last node, it points to the first um, no, the head nodes uh, head node. So here that um, it will this this uh, pointer will hold the address of the head node. If this is the head node, it will hold the address of the head node. Similarly, the previous pointer of the head node will point to the last node, like this node. Ooh. That way, it is it is circular. It doesn't have to. Um, it it doesn't have an end. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, now let's move forward. Okay. Now let's discuss some common um, use cases where uh, linked lists are used in real world. So you have seen uh, you have seen the image viewer in your um, PC, like. Um, that actually the previous and the next images are linked to each other. That's why you'll be able to, um, you can click the previous um, image from the next, uh, from the current image, and you can click the next from the current image. And the other uh, common use case is the browser that we use every day. It has, um, uh, it has, um, you know, the previous and next button. So uh, these are linked to, uh, linked as linked list. That's why you'll be able to access the previous and the next, um, next pages as well. And the third one is like the music player. Again, it has the previous and the next, like if you want to play, play a previous song, you just click this previous. So again, they are um, uh, linked as linked list at the um, behind. So these are some common um, real world scenarios where linked list are used. Uh, used. Awesome. Um, with that said, I think now we can uh, look into some code of uh, or see some syntax of how linked lists are um, represented in code, how linked list is represented in code. So, so here is a, um, yeah. So here is a, a, a class that, def that has some constructor. So this piece of code here is like the constructor for, uh, for creating a node. So it has, a, this code is in Python. Uh, so um, like for any few who doesn't follow Python, um, I can try to be generic as possible, but this is like um, the constructor, which helps you to create a node object. So here, um, and this is like um, the constructor for a linked list that will help to create a linked list object. So here um, I have created a linked list using this um, by calling this function and uh, have the linked list object ready. It's called linked hyphen list here. And um, now um, I have, so as I said earlier, linked list is a collection of nodes. So first um, um, first step is to create nodes and then link them together. So here um, I have created um, a, a head node. So how did I do that is uh, like call the list node and pass a value of three. So this uh, function, um, will actually go to this constructor. And this will uh, give me a, a node with a value of three with whatever value I specify here. Um, this create this uh, gives a node with a value of three. Uh, right now, we have not linked that node to anything. It's just a node. And similarly, I create another, the second node uh, by calling the same list node uh, with a value of four. So now I have another head node object with a value of four. Now I have two nodes. Now um, I have to wire them together so that I get the linked list. So how do I wire them or how do I connect them is with this piece of code here. So linked list, um, so the, the linked list object I created um, to the head node of that linked list, I'm assigning the second node. So I'm setting the next um, value for the pointer. So, so this is the next, uh, 
pointer, it holds the reference to the second node in the linked list or the next node in the linked list. So um, I want three to, um, I want four to be the next node in my linked list. So I just set the pointer as um, the head node. The three is the head node and head node dot next, I set it to the second node here. So that will give a linked list. Now, basically that these two nodes are linked with each other. Um, so threes are, uh, pointer variable will, will actually refer to the second node, which is four, um, four and we can just keep adding, uh, keep on adding nodes like this um, until like the linked list can hold um, any number of nodes from zero to N. So, um, so this is how uh, it's, it's a very um, basic form of creating a node and link, linking them together. Um, most of the languages like Python, I don't think they have an inbuilt um, method for, for linked list. So that's why we have to create a linked list node and a linked list class, um, get the constructor and call the constructor to create nodes and linked list. Um, let's get into some more um, functionalities, commonly used functionalities in linked list. Uh, the next commonly used uh, functionalities are insert, delete, and search. Let's go back to my diagram here. So um, let's say we have a linked list. I'll try to maximize the screen. Okay. So let's say we have a linked list A, and that linked list, um, it has three nodes, um, A, B, and D. I have a fourth node or um, that I wanted to that I wanted to um, insert. So basically I want to um, insert this node in the linked list. Now I have this node um, and I have to in insert the next node in um, this node as a next node to this node. So I have a node, I have a new node. I have to insert um, the new node after the next node. I mean, after the node. So how do I do that? Um, I have to change the references of this uh, this node so that they are linked to they are linked. Let me show you how to do that. So somehow, I I make my new node uh, next variable to point to D, and I have the my node's next value to point to the new node. Now they get linked. Uh, so C. B will point to C and then C will point to D. So here is a code that does that. What am I doing in this code? Um, here is a uh, new node, new node. And um, the next value for the new node, I'm setting it to D. D was the uh, next value for the node. So whatever was in node.next, I'm setting that to my new node. So my new node not next will will hold whatever my node node dot next was holding. In this case, the node dot next was pointing to D. Uh, B was pointing to D. So that D, I have to have my new node reference that D. And then uh, the second step is uh, this part of the wiring where I have to have the node point to my new node. I think most of you will have a question. Why don't we do it like? Uh, at least few of you might have this question. So why don't we do this step first and do this step second? Like, why don't we just set the new node first? So uh, let's let's say we are setting the node.next as new node. So my new node, I'm pointing that to node, uh, to, to the node. So if I do this, this wiring first, I'll lose the reference to whatever node this node was pointing to. So this node was pointing to D. Um, if so, so to to have that D, um, to have my new node point to that D, I have to first uh, point my new node to D, whatever B was holding, and then I have to change the pointer of B's reference to C node. Uh, that's the common way to uh, link a new node or insert a new node in the middle of the linked list. And going back to the presentation. Uh, 
um, so that's the insert function. So I have a def keyword to define my function and insert after is the name of my function. And then I have the node, uh, which is the B we saw in the diagram. And I have a new node, which is C. So I have to insert the new node after this node. In order to do that, I, um, I have the new node's next value point to whatever uh, node was holding, whatever value nodes next was uh, having. So node was pointing to D. So that value, I set it to new node.next. And after I do that, um, nodes next value, I set it to the new node. Um, basically, I just have these two lines of code written here. So if you get this, I think that's same as this one. That's just the same as this one. Um, so that's the insert after function. And the next function is delete after. Um, going back to the diagram again, um, here is a linked list with, with, with nodes A, B, C, D. Now let's say I want to delete this C node. I don't want to have this anymore. So again, I just have to change the wiring. Now B is next. Um, B is next is pointing to C, but I don't want C anymore. So B is next, I just point, make, I just change the pointer to pointer T. So now um, it will go back here. So it will just look like this B instead of pointing to C, now points to D. So I just do that by uh, writing this line of code, my node, let's call, let, let's call this as node. And the next value of node, I'm setting to the, uh, nodes next next so no dot next next will be d so i said that and uh, have the b point to d so that's how you delete a node um, there are different ways to delete a node um, so these these stay as orphan nodes so um, in python i think the garbage collector even in java it, it takes care of these orphan nodes um, every language is different so um, so yeah um, but this is a uh, this is a way to delete a, a specific node in the linked list. Going back to the presentation. Okay. So now we have seen insert and delete functions. Uh, let's look at the third function, search. So I have a node. Uh, I'm given a node. Let, uh, Let's assume that this is the head node of the linked list. And I have a value uh, that is the key. The, the input is this, um, I'm given a node and a value. So now um, I have to check if, which node is uh, matches with the value of the key. So basically this is an example for linked list traversal. So how do you traverse through a linked list? So um, assume, uh, let's assume that um, this is the linked list that we have been given. And we have to find, um, let's have this one. Okay, so uh, this is the linked list and we are given a uh, reference to this, uh, this node. And we have to check and, and the value of um, the key is C. So if we have to return the node that has a value C. So how do I do that? I'm just given access to this node, this particular node, which is the head node. So now I have to um, traverse through my linked list, like visit every single node of my linked list and see if the value matches with the key that is given in the input. If it matches, cool, I found the key, I found the node and I'll return that node back. Um, I, I check every single node until I reach the end of the node. So I, I go from A, I go to A, I see um, the key is C, the value here is A. So this is not the node I want. So I, I go over, I traverse and check the next node in the linked list and see if the key matches with the value in this node. It's C, doesn't match. And then I go over to the next node and check if, if it matches. Um, cool, it found a match. The value C matches with uh, what is the value in the node. So I go ahead and return. Let's say um, in a different example, uh, we are given a node, uh, we are given the value as key, uh, value of key as E. Um, so we have E. So I keep traversing my node. I reach the end of the node. I see it's not there. I reach the end 
and I don't find an E note. So I just return null back, I just return saying that I have never found the node. So, so that's uh, the, the code here um, in my, in the link, just, oh yeah. So this is the function that searches for a particular value. So again, the, the function name is search um, hyphen list and the node, which is the head node, usually we are given access to the head node. So here um, the node, and then uh, there is a key that I have to search for. Um, there is a while loop because I have to repeat the moving function. I have to hop from this node to this node. So I just uh, have to keep moving until I find the node. So to repeat, um, I have this while loop so that it keeps checking every node. And once it finds the node, um, it returns back. Um, let's see. Okay. So while node, if the node's value is not empty or not null, um, I keep checking. I, keep, I uh, How do I move from one node to another? I just give node.next. Um, so node equal to node.next. From one node, I move to the second node. And from that node, I move to this, the next node. So I keep doing that until I find the key. So whenever my uh, node's key matches with the uh, node's value matches with the key that is given, this will exit out of the while loop and return the uh, return that node. In in scenarios where key was not found, uh, this node value will be null. So uh, this is a simple uh, small function to search for a, a particular key in the linked list. Um, think, yeah, these are the code samples uh, that are most commonly um, used for um, like as beginners to um, learn, I mean, to get uh, better at link, uh, link lists. So um, let's discuss the time complexity. So uh, as seen uh, earlier, the insertion and deletion operations are O of one uh, for a link, link list if the insert happens at the end. Um, what if the insert happens at the end, um, the middle, like um, here, here there is a new node I'm inserting at the middle. So as I said earlier, in our example, we just had the node, but usually we'll, give, we'll be given access to the head node. So I have to hop uh, and see until I, um, you know, until I find the node. So if, it is, if the insert doesn't happen at the end, it is, it is going to be O of N, um, O of N runtime. But if, if, if it happens at the end, um, then it is O of one, otherwise it is O of N. The space complexity is, is again O of N in the worst case. Um, and the search is again O of N because we just have to keep moving through the nodes. Uh, those are the time complexity uh, of the functions. And now coming to the uh, next, part of our uh, presentation, the common techniques and uh, tips used to solve linked list problems. So a few of the common techniques um, I have here are like um, most commonly used to solve linked list problems. There could be many others too, but I've uh, referenced one or two here that I thought would be helpful. So uh, the first technique is the fast and slow pointer technique. Um, it, is, it is, the idea behind that is to have two pointers and um, keep moving those two pointers at, at a certain distance to find the nodes. Uh, let's get into detail of what it is. So there are two ways that we could use the fast and slow pointer. The first thing is, uh, the first way is uh, move fast k nodes ahead of slow, like move fast to a certain, um, certain distance. And from there, uh, move the slow pointer and the fast pointer at the same speed. Uh, this particular uh, scenario would be helpful for problems like finding the kth to the last node in a single pass. Let's go back to our diagram here. And so let's, uh, so this is the link list that I have. Um, okay, so this is the link list that I have and um, we are asked to uh, find like, um, just 
just too boring to have the same examples. So uh, this is a linked list, and we are we are asked to um, to find the uh, kth to the last node. So what does k to the last node means? Like if k is two, just find the second last number. If k is one, just find the last number, uh, last node. So it's like from the uh, from the reverse. So so the problem here is you have to find the kth to the last node from the list. So how do I do that? Uh, that's where uh, we can apply this technique of fast and slow pointers. Um, I have a piece of code that I would like to share. Um, let's see if I can find that. Bear with me for one minute. I just, I'm not able to share it. I'll just copy paste that to a screen where we can see, we all can see. So, so here is the uh, here is the code to find the kth to the last node. Um, as I said, we have we'll have two pointers here: the the slow node. Let's call it a slow node and fast node. And here is um, here is the dummy node. Uh, we have uh, discussed slightly in our previous slides what this sentinel nodes or dummy nodes are. These nodes really don't have a value. These are just used as used as a reference. So here, um, and these nodes will always point to the head node. So I'm having to, um, I create a dummy node and have my slow and fast pointer point to that dummy node. Okay. So, um, and, and I, uh, I move my fast node to a certain speed, like until K. So here, um, okay. So here, um, if K is two, um, I move my fast node. Initially, the fast and slow are here. So here is the fast and slow, or, or not even here, like you. The fast and slow, they they are the dummy nodes. They, they point to the dummy node. Let's assume that there's a dummy node here, and that points to the head node. This is the head. Okay, so, um, so here, this is the slow pointer, and this is the fast pointer. So, okay. So first, um, I move the fast pointer um, k times. Let's say uh, if my k is two, uh, I move the k pointer twice. So I um, so I have the k point. Uh, so I have the fast node pointing to head. So I'll move from here and here. So fast will basically point to the second node. I'll move fast as many number, k number of times um, ahead in the linked list. So, and my slow will still be pointing to, uh, slow will still be pointing to the first, the, the dummy node. And once uh, fast reaches the, uh, you know, the kth position, then, then we'll have the slow and fast uh, move at the same speed. Now, uh, here, here is the code. Um, so I move the fast node for k uh, until it reaches k, like k times. And once fast node reaches the k time, uh, uh, k value, then um, I move the fast and slow at the same speed. So when k reaches the end, when the fast node reaches the end, um, slow, slow will be pointing to the kth node. So here in our uh, scenario, we have moved k to um, you know k twice, like uh, k is now pointing to the second node, and now uh, then you start moving slow and fast at the same speed. So if I move fast, it'll it will move here, and slow will move here. 
and then um, the fast will move from three to four, one step, and slow will move from one to two. And now, the fast will move from four to the next node, which will be null. So it will move to null. And when it reaches null, my slow would reach the kth node. So we want to find and return this node. Uh, so k will be pointing, the slow pointer will be at the kth node. So that's how uh, you return like the, um, the kth uh, from the last node in one pass. Um, definitely there are different ways to do it, like, uh, but it will take um, like two more iterations. Like you have to first traverse over the linked list there and then again traverse to find the kth last node. So um, if we wanted to do in one pass, like in a single iteration, then we would, um, we, we can use this particular technique of moving fast, having fast and slow pointers and moving them, uh, moving them at a certain distance. Um, the next technique is, So um, there are two variants of fast and slow pointer. One is having fast uh, move K nodes ahead. The next is uh, having fast move, uh, move faster, I mean, faster than slow, usually like twice the speed of um, the slow. Um, this technique is used for detecting a loop. So if, uh, if I have to, so what is a loop? If the last node points to the first node, uh, then it's a loop. Get rid of all these. So usually um, this will point, the last node will point to a null value, but in case if null doesn't point to a, uh, if the last value points to the first, the head, then there is a loop, there is no end. So there may be a problem like uh, they'll uh, like, you are given a linked list and you're asked to check if there if there's a cycle that exists in a linked list. So the immediate technique that we can um, think of or that uh, that we could uh, leverage is the uh, fast and slow pointer technique. So have two pointers, slow and uh, fast, and then uh, have uh, like we could have fast move uh, twice the speed of slow. Like when when slow moves one step, have fast move two steps from here and then from here to here. So that way, um, if the fast and slow meet, then there is a loop. Um, going back to my code here. But yeah, uh, that's the, I can quickly show my code if possible. Um, So this uh, code is similar to what we have uh, for the previous, but just with a minor tweak in it. So here. Can, uh, I hope it's visible. Not let me know, I can try to zoom my screen. So maybe I could zoom. Okay, so um, can everyone see my screen? Like, is it visible? Yes. Okay, so um, uh, this is just similar to um, the previous one that we saw, but the only difference is here, fast uh, moves twice the speed of slow. So fast is fast node dot next dot next and slow node is slow dot next. If fast and slow meets, then uh, then there is a cycle um, here in our example. So we, we move every time we move slow node once, we move fast twice, okay? And here, uh, let's just go over this example here. So slow had moved one step and fast had moved twice. And now fast is at three and slow is at two. Now again, we are moving fast two times. So that will move from three to four. And again, from four to, um, like from four to uh, one. 
So my fast will be will now be at one here and slow will be at, uh, slow is just moving one step. So it will be at three now. Again, uh, in the next iteration, we have a while loop that keeps doing that uh, moving of slow and fast pointers. So again, in my next iteration, fast will have to move twice. So currently fast is at now one, and now it will move twice. So it will move from one to two and two to three. Slow is at two and slow will move once from two to three. So now uh, the, the, the fast and slow are at the same nodes. So if that condition reaches, going back to our code, um, if fast is equal to a uh, slow node, then we know that there is a loop. Um, the nodes are connected, there is no end. So we immediately break the while loop and return true. And it keeps doing that, but um, fast and slow never meets, then there is no node and we return false. So that, this is a, a common function that uh, that is used to see uh, if, um, if a linked list has a cycle. And, Okay, so going back to our presentation here. Um, so, so we discussed the fast and slow pointer technique. Um, the next common technique is having three pointers, like previous, current, and next. Um, this is used in scenarios Wait, where... Um, uh -huh. Can you go back to one previous code snippet one quickly, please? Sure. Yes, I have the code snippet here. So in the while, in the first iteration, if fast node is not equal to slow node, which it is not, so then it will just return false and exit out of the while loop? Um, no, it this, uh, let's say the first, um, first iteration here, the fast node will not be equal to the uh, slow slow node. Like, um, I, I think I didn't get your question properly. Can you come again, um, just to make sure so I understand it correctly? First iteration, fast and fast node, while fast node is not null and fast node of next is not null is what it means, right? Um, mm -hmm. So fast node is fast node, next, next, slow node is next. And then if fast node is slow node, which if condition doesn't get satisfied. So it will exit the if statement. And after that is written false, it will return false and exit, right? It won't go through another iteration because there is already a return. Uh, I mean, as far as this code, yes, uh, it will not go. I mean, until it sees does the fast load is equal. Second iteration, does it get into second iteration is the question I had, I'm not sure. Okay. I think it's the last line, return false, if you just unindent it. Yeah. Oh, probably. Is that it? Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what I'm asking, like, because I was not sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, so here, the, the return false would be uh, done only if the whole while loop, like, finishes and it doesn't find a match. Like it doesn't have the fast node equal to slow node. It had visited every single node in the linked list. Only then it will return the false. Um, I think while copying and pasting, there were some indentation errors. Um, hope that made sense. Um, That's still not clear because um, fast node will never be null. Fast node dot next will never be null. And they will both keep iterating through the cycle. So when does that exit? So I see what you're saying. So um, if there is a cycle, they should anyway meet, right? Like let's say there is not a cycle and fast node will be, uh, fast node will become null, right? So uh, when it reaches the end, uh, let's say there's a common, like a singular, singly linked list where it doesn't have a cycle. And in that case, the fast node will be at, um, will be null because it had reached the end right? And that way it'll just exit out of the while loop. Maybe um, use one point ahead and leave head as is. 
keep mm -hmm. moving the other pointer and compare to head every time. Or it is not a head, but it's a temporary pointer. Do we need to move both the pointers? Why do we need to move both the pointers? Probably is what I'm not getting. Um, having two pointers is um, is to see like uh, this is. I mean, they, they, there could be like different ways to do it, right? Like um, you can have this has um, the cycle implementation in a different way. But uh, this particular example, uh, why we have two uh, two pointers is. Um, uh, to see if the fast node and slow node uh, meet at some point, right? And uh, if they meet, then you have to return it as true. So uh, when do they meet uh, if they have a cycle? Um, you can do that so in, in a single- assuming I don't, mm -hmm. if I, if I had ahead. one- I think you're breaking. Like um, if we were to have the one pointer at the starting node, wherever mm -hmm. we are starting, either fast or slow, either one. Say let's okay. call node one and no, moving node and stationary node. If the stationary node stays put and the moving node keeps moving and then every time you check whether it, it's meeting the first one, then at some point it will come back and meet. If it doesn't meet or if it hits null or if it doesn't meet, then you can return. But this way, Fast node and fast node dot next will never be null. So I'm just like one. Maybe I'll try it out and then see because this is like not as clear to me. Or maybe okay, I'm the uh, only one. Okay, fast node and fast node dot next. Where in which in which condition will it not be null? Um, when it is circular, right? When it is not. Yeah. So if it is circular, then fast node and fast dot next will never be. Uh, no, will never, right. yeah. hey, never be not. Can I ask, or I mean, I think maybe what would clarify is if we just had like a little drawing um, so that we can understand, because um, the thing that I got mixed up on and maybe other people would be as well is I was thinking about circularly linked lists, which is one instance of a loop, but there is such a thing as having a loop in a linked list, but it's not like a circularly linked list. It just, you know, it starts somewhere it's you know singly linked, and then eventually you know the last node points to the fourth node. So that's not that you wouldn't call that a circularly linked list, um, but that does contain a loop. And I think if you're envisioning a circularly linked list, you're not going to understand that case. Um, and I made that assumption, which is why I was confused. So if I <laughs> if I'm understanding it correctly, at least, um, would you mind maybe explaining it in your own way if if you agree? <laughs> Um, sure. I'll try to explain that. Um, so, um, so let's take this scenario, right? Where, uh, where a node is actually, uh, where, where it, it has a loop, it never has an end four is just pointing to one and it doesn't have a loop and it doesn't have an end. So um, I think what JA was saying was um, have a, have just a single node, right? And, um, and have like, have the node, like have, just move one node. Um, oh, let's call this is node one. This, but one stays steady and the keeps and one keeps lines. moving like keep moving mm -hmm. i think yeah definitely you can do that way as well uh but um yeah n1 and two or something like that mm -hmm. but definitely it would be like uh like slower than having two pointers right so you're um this way just um if i think we can just compare uh, offline we can just compare the uh time complexity of both the ways and i'm sure um one uh, one advantage this having two pointers would do is it it, it could have a slightly better um, runtime because because we are just moving we are skipping the nodes that we don't want to like um, for sure um, if if the node meets like hopping through or uh, skipping the second node and moving to the third node um, you don't have to go to the slow node is what I'm saying so um, that could be one reason but um, I mean um, 
that's that's how I uh, visualize it. But definitely happy to hear uh, someone else thoughts if someone wants to pitch in. Um, I think there was another comment that um, if the cycle, like if four was pointing at two or three and you kept a slow stationary on one, you would never catch the cycle and that's why, right? Oh, okay, I get it now. Okay, uh, so uh, hi, this is Alpa here. Um, what I understand from this is it's just a technique to minimize the traversing. And the app, when you start applying this to some kind of a real life uh, situation, like maybe reversing or sorting it. And uh, you know how you, when you do uh, sort, like if you are uh, where you, um, if it is a sorted order and you want to just traverse only a half of way, then probably this can be applied. So it's a technique. There is no, mm -hmm. right now what we are doing is we are just learning a technique. We are not learning how to apply to some real life scenarios. Am I making sense or is that something what I'm not understanding? Uh, that's the intent of having, um, having um, that's the intent to just convey the technique and have it applied to a sample code. So, um, yeah, there. I mean, there could be like multiple ways of doing it, but this is just a technique uh, that we can, you know, that we can use, like having slow and fast pointers and um, how we can use that to find a loop. Um, yeah. I, Maybe like design pattern kind of a thing, like, you know, you have a pattern, then you apply it to something and that's how you see. Uh, Okay. Um, so I think I am what I got clarified is um, what uh, I'm not sure somebody said is like if it is one, two, three, four, five, six, say, and three, four, five, six are in a loop, one, two, uh, it's still a list, right? Then you won't identify that two, three, four are in a loop if you don't move both pointers. Did I get that right? That's correct, yeah. So let's say here four is pointing. That's probably why we are moving. Mm -hmm. And um, the minimum number of nodes you need to make a loop is two, right? Two should point to three, three should point back to two. That's how it becomes at least a minimum of two. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are moving the fast node by a factor of two and the slow node just iterating it. So I think I get it now, but I don't know if everybody got it. Yeah, so uh, I'm clear now. Thank you. That was helpful. Sorry for showing that. I'm glad you got it clarified. Um, okay. Going back. Uh, the next technique is just to use uh, previous current and next pointers. This scenario is used when you wanted to reverse a linked list. So um, here in our diagram, like if you want to reverse this linked list, then you ha just have these pointers point back. Click. If this is node A and this is node B, uh, node B will point to A and node, node C and node D. So this will again point to the previous node and D will point to the previous node. So uh, to do this reversal, uh, one thing could be useful is to have three pointers, like keep track of the previous node, keep track of the current node, and keep track of the next node. Um, by doing that, uh, we can, um, it, it could be used to uh, reverse this, uh, reverse the linked list seamlessly um, in a single pass. So there's a code here. We did, I think uh, this code was discussed in one of our 
linkless session, uh, previous sessions. So I'm using that here. So this is uh, to reverse a linked list. So I have three nodes here, uh, three pointers here, the previous, uh, the next, and the current. Uh, previous and next would be set to the dummy nodes, um, the node that we have here. And, um, and we change the pointers so that the linked list is reversed. Let's see how what this piece of code does. So uh, the next, um, going back here, Let's assume that we are at uh, we are at this node, and uh, let's assume that we are at the, this node, and this is the previous node, and this is the next node. So um, I have to have B point to A instead of C. So uh, to do that, um, whatever B is pointing, I hold that in a in a in a you know in a in a variable so that I don't lose track of it. So B is now pointing to C. So I hold that in a in a value here in a variable here. Um, uh, in the next, uh, so here is the next variable and I hold that uh, currents next to next. And now I can do the reversal easily. So uh, to do the reversal, I just point the second, uh, the B nodes next pointer, uh, instead of pointing to C node, make it point to the previous node. Since I've, I have access to the previous node, um, I can easily have the B, um, B can easily be pointed to the previous node. So here, uh, current.next is pointing to the previous node. This will actually reverse the reference of that particular node. And the next, uh, next two lines are here are just moving across the nodes. So once I reverse the pointer, now whatever I do, um, I just have to have um, the previous point to the current node. Now the, uh, now the current will become my previous and the, and the next node here will become my current. So just, I just move over the, move over the linked list, like travels over the linked list um, after I change the pointer for this node. So, um, so this is a small piece of code here to do a reversal, but but the idea here is to have to uh, you know keep track of the previous pointer as well um, and have three pointers: the previous to reference the previous node, the next uh, to reference the next node, and the current to reference this, uh, the current node. Um, with that said, I think we are almost uh, coming towards our end of the presentation. Um, some other tips are, uh, if you're getting started with the linked list, uh, uh, maybe starting with search, uh, doing search, insert and delete function um, is a good way uh, to just become, to just uh, getting your hands on it and become comfortable with the list. And always while solving a problem, one thing to keep in mind is what if the linked list is having just one value and um, what if it just has, um, two values or doesn't have a value at all. How do I handle those scenarios? And um, one other tip from our one of our mentors, Manish, is like have um, like draw nodes in pen and paper and link to them manually. I mean, uh, like have a link and uh, um, sorry, just a second. Sorry about that interruption. Um, um, so yeah, uh, those are the special uh, linked list um, uh, like cases that we can think of and then uh, have the Sentinel node as a technique for um, to deal with uh, no um, null objects to avoid having null objects. So uh, have like a dummy node um, so that we don't lose track of the head node in certain scenarios. Um, 
that's it. Uh, I think um, those are the tips that we had. Um, and the last piece, um, I think we can have uh, 10 minutes of um, some time for our Q&A. Like if you have any further questions, we can use this time to um, discuss with one another. Um, does that sound good? Yeah, I will just stop the recording. <laughs>